I'm all? sorry, this is not for cosmetics. It's you guys will learn minute. quickly. I'm not big into cosmetics. <laughs> it's just a little chilly. <laughs> <clears throat> all right, what we got? Fire away. All right, Mike, Jordan Hill with Dogs247. We talked to you a couple weeks ago in Birmingham. Just how much progress have you seen just since then to now? We've made a significant jump offensively uh, to go from incredibly challenged to somewhat challenged. Uh, got a little bit better there. We were a little bit ahead defensively early in practice. Um, the guys embraced that side. Uh, we spent a little more time on that side as a staff. It's all part of it, uh, just going through these these uh, processes, right? And, and um, trying to figure out on a daily basis where to, where to plug holes and um, where you put points of emphasis daily and, and weekly. Um, the past week or so, we've we've again we've we've made a jump offensively. What a Jed May with UGASports.com. Just in your mind, what would necessarily constitute a successful exhibition tomorrow night? Growth more than anything. Let's just get better. Let's be connected. Um, culture is a word we all beat up as coaches, right? You know, and it, it's it's action. You know, in terms of how we define it as staff, and, and you want to see guys helping each other up off the floor. And, Celebrating winning plays, being happy for one another, um, evaluating body language coming off the court. Coach, why did I come out? He came out because we subbed you out. You know, we we're trying to be the best team we could be. Uh, whether the guy off the bench goes in as the sixth man, as the tenth man, how does he handle that? Uh, how do we handle who gets what type of shot? Um, you know, we we culture is really important. Um, playing for one another, the connection, of course. Uh, offensive and defensive execution is obviously really important, but we we got to take it with a grain of salt being in front of the fans for the first time. Uh, but hopefully, going back to that growth word, we do get a little bit better, uh, both offensively and defensively tomorrow. Coach White, Lane Smith, really with the Lake Oconee News. How does having guys in your first year, like Braylon Bridges and uh, Jalen Ingram, kind of help you <clears throat> establish this culture here? Well, it, it helps to have a better understanding of uh, last year's culture, you know, and, and um, some of those guys were, were new last year. There hasn't been a, a bunch of guys, obviously, that have been in mm -hmm. a few years. Uh, and then we've got a bunch of first-year guys in addition. But just to have a, a sense of, of what, uh, you know, Braylon's been through and Cario and Jackson and these guys uh, gives you a good starting point. Um, but, you know, we've got, we've got 14 guys on the roster that have not experienced – winning at this level and, and, and being a significant piece of winning at this level. And so uh, it's a, a very much a, a growth process for, uh, for this team. And it's, it's going to take a little time. And uh, there's going to be some steps involved. Mark, Mark Weiser, I think it's been our help. What kind of evaluation <clears throat> tool was the scrimmage, I guess, you had against UCF, maybe in Savannah? It may be a lot of secret. It was very secret. <laughs> 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 We struggled offensively, you know, and going back to, to the, the initial question, um, we learned a lot about ourselves in terms of um, role identification, um, the little things offensively, um, some bad habits carried over into playing against another team. Um, again, a huge point of emphasis early on in practice was We've got to make a huge jump defensively to be competitive in this league, to give ourselves a chance night in and night out, just to have a chance, right? Uh, and we learned pretty quickly um, about midway through the scrimmage, we got ways to go offensively. And so uh, you try to balance it out, and that's why you have scrimmages and exhibitions and non conference. And uh, uh, that's what we learned more than anything. Palmer Toms, Dogs HQ, um, you talk a lot about this growth. How have you seen? Justin Hill grow in his time here so far, and how's his hamstring coming along? He's finally strung together a few practices in a row without any issues. So um, limited reps, a little bit unique, where um, you know if he was normally at 100, percent you know these these past couple months he would probably gotten double the amount of reps. He's he's missed a bunch, but in the past week or so, he's caught up and um, he's done a good job. He's got a great attitude. He brings it every day. He's got a great motor for a point guard. He just goes, goes, goes offensively, defensively. He's a detail guy. You know, little things are important to him um, in terms of uh, uh, you know, you'd ask him to do something that, that other guys might think could be a little bit trivial. You know, that's, that's, that's minor. It's big to him. You know, he's, uh, 
he's uh, he's got high basketball character, and uh, we expect big things from him. Speaking of Justin, when he was in the portal, what intrigued you guys about him? His toughness. Uh, knew some guys in that league. Uh, one being Darius Nichols, who is like a brother to me. We worked together for a long time. Uh, who's a head coach in that league, and just uh, the the. The imprint, you know, he would make on on the game intangibly, in, in you know, just to, again, I, I said winning player, you know, uh, basketball character. He's, uh, plays with toughness, plays with some tenacity, plays with, uh, of course, speed, you know, at his position. But uh, pesters the basketball defensively. Uh, so he was a guy that uh, we prioritized, and um, and he quickly decided to to become a, a bulldog. Even before his visit actually surprised us a little bit, but he wanted an opportunity to, um, you know, put a stamp on a, on a rebuild and be a big part of something. Oh, we got time for one or two more. When you talk about growth, like how much of that is, you know, you just got to finally get out there and play another team to actually see some of these things start really building? You know, this team's actually em embraced um, battling against each other consistently uh, as much as most teams that I've been around. So it's not, you know, to a certain extent, they're, they're ready to play someone else, right? But it's not as much as some other teams that, that you may have said two weeks ago um, at this time, you know, these guys are just done competing with one another. Um, we've got a ways to go in terms of being really competitive in this league, obviously, but I, I do admire the fact that these guys, like yesterday, we had a really good practice. I mean, guys were getting after each other. We'll switch the teams up as, as much as possible and try to keep it fresh. Um, and I'd be surprised if, if we don't get a lot done today. So it's it, it's a it's a good starting point. The guys again consistently come to work. Mike, with the uh, with the football game on Saturday, mm -hmm. any kind of uh, you know wager with your brother going into that? Um, no, no, no. Uh, we'll have some conversations though. Late week, there'll be some trash talking for sure. <laughs> uh, I'll leave it at that. Mike said, "I can get it one more." Exciting weekend around here. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Ty, uh, I lost my train of thought. Terry Roberts and uh, Cameron Lindsay, what roles uh, do you envision for them and what kind of are their skill sets? Uh, Kyron Lindsay is a, he's a unique, he's a unique player, especially offensively. He's, uh, I don't know if he's been diagnosed, but he's, he's got to be ambidextrous. His ability to use either hand. He's a lefty who's got just as a, a, a good, uh, of an ability in the paint to finish with his right hand. He, he's, uh, he's got some of these junk shots that he just throws stuff up. He's got great touch, and he's one of these guys that a lot of stuff he throws up on the rim finds a way to, to go in. He's just got a nose to score it. Uh, kind of got some old man throwback stuff to him that's kind of hard to teach. He's just instinctually a good scorer, uh, especially you know 15 and feet it in, uh, driving it, even getting other guys shots. Uh, Terry Roberts, um, tenacious competitor. Uh, he's, he's got a ways to go, just like Kyron, in, in terms of maxing out and become, becoming the best players that they can be. But Terry, um, that's where it starts with him, is his level of competitiveness. Uh, he's great defensively on the ball, got to continue to develop off of the ball. Um, can make some shots, you know, can score a little bit. Uh, but offensively, his his greatest attribute right now is probably directing traffic and making guys around him better. Um, I said ambidextrous a couple times with Kyron. Um, Terry's a really good left-handed passer. He's a good right-handed passer. Obviously, he's a strong right-handed guy, but passes it equally as well uh, with with both hands and uh, makes guys around him better. Thanks, coach.